Angel Bamford Show. No matter where you go, remember the road that will lead you home. No matter where you go, remember the road that will lead you home. Charity and the Pepper Badge. And of course, DJ uh... <laughs> Welcome. On this episode of the show, we discuss women and their rights to sexual agency. We have a very scintillating conversation coming up. Stay with us. Women are often slut shamed for owning their sexuality in ways that men are allowed to by societal convention. This is a system that has been upheld for centuries across many cultures. In contemporary times, women are gaining more control over that narrative and expressing themselves sexually in ways they deem fit on their own terms. On this episode of the show, we ask, how damaging is this societal norm on the sexual and mental health of women? How does it impact the choices women make when it comes to their sexual lives? And what is the long-term impact on society. My guests are seated and they are in the persons of Nana Dakwa Sechema. She's an African feminist writer and author of the book, The Sex Lives of African Women, and also Dede Aye, feminist and event organizer. Welcome, ladies. <laughs> Women and their right to sexual agency. Nana, how fundamental is sexuality? Let's start there. I think sexuality <laughs> is fundamental. Yes. You know, without sexuality, you, I, Dede, we wouldn't be here today. And sexuality is all encompassing. It's mm -hmm. about how we feel, how we think, our sexual orientation, pleasure. It really is the complete package. And I think it's essential. Mm -hmm. It's essential to happiness. It's essential to life and mm -hmm. just feeling fulfilled in every area of your life. Mm. Dede, well, what's sexuality for you? Well, I think it's a part of life mm -hmm. and it's a journey it's it's fluid it's just a journey you just have to go through yeah whenever okay. you're ready to go through it okay i i think often people confuse sex with sexuality can we demystify the differences are there any differences first of all there no. are differences so sex is a physical act right okay. and i would say sex is part of what makes up sexuality but it is not the entire package. Whereas I think of sexuality as an entire package. And I liked what Dede said about sexuality also being a journey mm -hmm. because your sexuality can change. How you feel at a particular age can change. Mm -hmm. How you feel when you go through a different life experience, maybe motherhood, for example, can change your sexuality. And so I just think of sexuality as if you think of like a box, it's mm -hmm. everything that's in the box, mm -hmm. right? And, and it's like incredible. And sex is just like a tiny part of the box. Of that box. Yes. Very well. Now, what are the experiences of women when it comes to asserting their sexual choices or their choices in relation to se sexuality or sexual relations? Did well, they? Oh. I'll come back to you, Nana. Did they? Well, hmm. The experiences of women. When it comes to asserting their choice. As women yeah. or me personally as I mean, woman. let's talk about you and then we'll talk about women in general. Well, it's been very hard because um, we live in a patriarchal society. Yeah. So everything is, is quite harder for, for, for women. For women. Mm -hmm. And even though I don't identify as a woman anymore, I identify as non-binary. Okay. Um... Growing what up, is that? Please educate us. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. 
So identify as non-binary also comes in when I say it's a journey. Okay. Sexuality is a journey because I, I reached a point in my life where I felt my experiences as what a term a woman, mm -hmm. what a term, I didn't align with it. And not because there was any gatekeeping of mm -hmm. womanhood with my friends around me because when I was on my journey to discovering that I am non-binary, mm -hmm. I had my chosen family around me. Okay. I was talking to them mm -hmm. and everything. And it made me realize that sometimes I wake up in the morning yeah. and, and I'm a person. Okay. I don't want to be seen as a woman. You don't identify man. as a woman. Yeah, I'm just a person living okay. in this world. I can be anybody tomorrow. Okay. And I was anything I wanted to be two days ago. Okay. Tomorrow I can wake up and be like, okay, I don't want to be feminine anymore. Mm -hmm. I want to be mass presenting. Okay. Okay, so tomorrow next I can wake up and say, hmm, I feel like being girly yeah. and being a woman today and so for you it's having the option right yes having it's the not option being to be who put you want to in be. a box okay and being told that you were supposed to be a certain way even though now people are redefining womanhood mm -hmm. i still do not align with it mm. so i prefer to, to be, be non-binary binary. so i prefer to my pronouns are they them okay they and them not yeah. she not him not her. Yeah. They. At the beginning of my journey, I was using she yeah. and they. Okay. But um, as time went on, I abandoned the she and now I identify as they, them. So those are my pronouns. Okay. All right. Give it up. <laughs> I love that we are talking about it because I think often we, um, and perhaps I, I should add myself to this, you know, bracket of people. A lot of people forget that human beings have individual experiences of bigger things, right? So when you say woman, womanhood, what does that mean for Didi? What does that mean for Nana? What does that mean for Angela and whoever is watching me? So thank you for talking about it, Didi. Nana, how difficult is it for women to assert their sexuality in, in the society we find ourselves today? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure a lot of people watching will agree that it can be extremely difficult for women to assert themselves and to assert their sexuality yeah. in Ghanaian society. Our society is, for the most part, conservative. Um, mm -hmm. Some people say we're religious. I'd like to rather say I think we're hypocritical okay. for the most part, you know. Um, and women and girls especially are not brought up with any sense of comprehensive sex education. Mm -hmm. I mean, we saw the Bruhaha recently when the government of Ghana tried to introduce comprehensive sex education into schools, for me, mm -hmm. it was ridiculous that we're now in a situation where this has pushback. been taken yeah. away, you know, mm -hmm. because, I mean, sex and sexuality education is fundamental to our lives. We have yeah. the right to know about our bodies, to understand our bodies, to mm -hmm. understand the whole range of sexuality. It's crazy to me that somehow people think it's wrong to teach children about, about their bodies mm -hmm. and about sex in a country where we constantly read in newspapers about young girls being defiled. We have a problem of sexual abuse in this country. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason we have this problem is because people are not educated about their bodies and are not educated about sex. Mm. 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 So they don't even know that, you know, their body is theirs and people do not have the right to touch them in particular yeah. ways. Yeah. And if we're not being educated about this, how are people going to learn, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And of course, this will just have like long-term repercussions on women and girls because you don't grow up then being confident in your body. Yes. How then do you become an adult who is able to have pleasurable sex? Mm -hmm. You know, how then do you become an adult who is confident, who is able to negotiate safe sex? Mm. It's a problem. Yeah, yeah, certainly. So how then can we be more encouraging of women and their freedom to be, you know, more sexually assertive, just as men are, did they? Well, how I think we can be encouraging mm 
mm. is by first of all allowing women to be themselves as i said it's a journey from the beginning yeah just allow we need to provide the tools mm -hmm. for them to understand what sexuality is about yeah. understand that and that's where it starts is, with the education right? yes mm -hmm. it starts with the education and when they have the tools now it's up to them to make the decisions they want to make so that they'll be making informed decisions not decisions that they feel mm -hmm. it's it's good for others yeah because a lot of people growing up thinking that they need to please a man or they need to please their family. So you hear people saying that, oh, I'm keeping my virginity to marriage. Why are you doing that? No, no, there's no problem with keeping your virginity. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's your, it's, choice. it's your choice. But yeah. you ask someone why they do it, and they say it's because it will increase my bride price. Mm. And, you know, things like this are very problematic. I want, um, I want people to understand that once they have the tools, and the education is going to be easier for them to make decisions. And if they choose to pursue their sexuality journey, then they are making an informed decision. Mm -hmm. And if they choose not to, they are also making an informed so, decision. So if I hear you, it, it stems from the gender roles that we've laid out in mm -hmm. society, right? A woman is supposed to be like this, a man is supposed to be like this, a man is supposed to be authoritative, brute perhaps, stoic. Um, assertive, and one is supposed to be submissive and quiet and calm and regal. So, I, and we are taught that at a very young age, right, yeah. Anna? Yes. Yeah. At a very young age, and that's where the education comes in. But how can men be part of the struggle in creating safe spaces for women to express their sexuality? Anna? I mean, I think this issue affects men and it affects women, mm -hmm. right? Um, I don't, I mean, I, I feel like guys also get told lots of really unhealthy messaging about sex mm -hmm. right you've got to be a stud you've got to be this meanwhile that may not be who the man is on the inside men also have to be able to figure out their own sexuality mm -hmm. for themselves they're also i mean there are also a lot of guys who get sexually abused as children yeah. but they don't think of it as sexual abuse they, they feel like conquest exactly they think exactly. it was a conquest right yeah. but if you're under the age of consent and an older person has sex with you that's not sex mm -hmm. you know that's mm -hmm. sexual abuse and rape and statutory rape. Mm -hmm. So this is like important for people of all genders, yeah. whether they are men, whether they're women, whether they're people who are yeah. non-binary. Speaking of conquest, and I like that you mentioned that, how, how dangerous is it for praising men for their sexual experiences? You know, cause there's this culture of praising men when they have a, you know, they've conquered someone. Hey, I finish her, I finish her, you know? How dangerous is that? <laughs> okay, that's hilarious. It happens, right? You hear that yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I finish it. I mean, and it I think happens there's also all this the thing of the man doing the action and the woman yes. receiving the exactly. action, right? Yeah. And not them, the two of yes. them engaging in yeah. an act. Is the woman who the man who did it to the woman? Yeah. How dangerous is that, Diddy? It's very, very dangerous because it creates room for sexual assault mm -hmm. and rape and all these things because. People do not think it's wrong to see a woman just having fun. And even, let's use the simple one, you go to the club or you go to town or you go to a party and you're dancing and a strange man does not even ask you permission, can I dance with you? So you can tell him no or yes. And he just jumps behind you yes. and he's just shaking his waist and it's just like, why why the hell are you behind me shaking your waist when you haven't even asked for my consent because of this notion the consent culture is bad mm -hmm. a lot of people do not even Especially ask for consent yeah. and also to people coerce women to, like for example the man be like oh i have blue balls and it's just like i, I beg, have I to beg, do you <laughs> just the tip just the tip. exactly and now you. There's this guilt. <laughs> There's this guilt that okay, let me give in to him because I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm just a woman, mm. and I'm just gonna lie there, and he'll probably finish off, and but I'll I, just get up and go. But I would say that is consent. If you lied there, and after, of course, saying no, 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 but eventually you gave in, then you've 
given consent. I, I like to talk about enthusiastic consent, oh, right? Certainly. Consent is not lying there. Consent is, you know, I think people should actually ask their partners, mm -hmm. shall we go ahead? Mm. Are you enjoying this? Yeah. And consent can be withdrawn at any point in time. So even if I say, yes, I want to have sex with you and we go into the bedroom, halfway through, I may no longer be uh -huh. feeling it. And this part of the conversation, I know a lot of my viewers, especially the men who have a problem with, because they say from the beginning, everything was fine. You agreed. If, if I mean, I'm a woman. If right before the act, I say no, it's no. But some men will say, ah, after everything I've done, all the work I've put in, all the, we are laughing, but it's a serious matter. All the work I've put in, you can't say no at this point. But it goes both ways. Men, you also have a right to say no. It Thank is not you. by Thank force. You. Feel free to change your mind. <laughs> We have these conversations. I have these conversations with, with guys, and they say, uh -uh. if let's say 20 minutes we've been, uh, you know, engaging in foreplay, and then just when the act, the final act is supposed to take place, you say no, and I have blue balls, uh -uh. and I bought you drinks and a dinner, no. You know? I always say if I was going to charge for sex, it would have been much more than the dinner Thank and drinks you. that you bought exactly. me. So please. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. What a bottle of wine or what? Exactly. Please. Yeah. And also too, I think because that's why that's why I say it's dangerous because people view sex as mm. a reward. Mm. Yeah. It's not a reward. Yes. That there's a difference between transactional sex, sex work, mm -hmm. and two people having consenting sex yeah yeah there's a vast difference that's why sexuality is is, va vast. is vast yeah. because there are different things in there mm -hmm. sex is not just sex there are there are different types of sex mm -hmm. and there are different ways of going about it yeah so if it's agreed even with transactional sex it has to be agreed upon yeah. there's consent yes yeah, there's consent needed. yes so even that you agree on the transaction yeah. even with sex work you also agree on the transaction that goes, goes into on. it but this one there was no prior notice of a transaction going on okay so there's no way you can say because you paid for dinner mm. and it wasn't like drinks said, okay if you buy me dinner then I'm you get had, to have yeah that's yes. about <laughs> buying them <laughs> How about the married men? Marriage as an institution is seen as, okay, the woman's job is to satisfy her, her husband and vice versa. How about that? If The fact that you're married to somebody doesn't mean you've bought a permanent mm -hmm. right over their body. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. such a thing as spousal rape does exist for a reason. Yeah. 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 Let's talk about, let's help the men out a bit. How do, or how should men navigate withdrawn consent? Just at the, the 11th hour, the lady or the woman or person they're engaging in the act with withdraws consent. How do they? Well, I think that? if I were a guy, I would really want to make sure that whoever I'm having sex with is really enjoying themselves and having a good time. Mm -hmm. And if I knew the person wasn't having a good time, why would I want to continue? So I feel like it's in the man's own interest to be checking if his partner is having a good time. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Did they, how about you? Yeah, I also agree with what she said because mm -hmm. imagine you are having sex with someone and the person is not even excited to be having sex with you it doesn't even sound <laughs> yeah it doesn't even sound interesting mm. and also too i want men to understand that they do not own any woman's body you mm. you can't own anybody <laughs> even even if the person is your spouse, your partner, whatever, or even a sex worker, someone you are having a transactional sex with, mm -hmm. any of these things, you do not own anybody's mm. body. Each person owns their own body. Yeah. And that is what everybody should keep at the back of their mind when they are going in to have sex with someone. Mm. So... When you Whether have your husband or wife or whatever, they own so their body. So once you have, I know maybe your ego might be bruised. Oh, this person doesn't want me or something. But you should also understand that everybody has ego. If we are all acting on our egos, <laughs> chaos. There will be so much chaos. Yeah. So yeah. you should always bear in mind that you don't own anybody. So 
once the consent is withdrawn, there's nothing you can do. You can't force someone to do something they don't want to yeah. do. Yeah. What did they say? You can take a horse to the water. water. You can force it to drink. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> how how does the stigma surround women who own their sexuality breed sec sexual exploitation? Nana. Yeah, I mean women who are confident about their sexuality who are sex posit positive yeah. are often portrayed as sluts as yeah. loose women as undesirable and that's definitely part of what i think contributes to a culture of rape and violence mm. right because sometimes people get raped and the first thing people are asking is were, were they a virgin how many partners have they had before really what were they wearing what were they wearing what you were know? they doing there exactly mm -hmm. That all just contributes to a, a culture of, mm -hmm. of rape mm -hmm. and impunity and, and increases mm. sexual violence in the society. How can society band together to eliminate the instances of, of rape? Really? That's like a very big question because we live in a conservative country which does not even take into account sexual assaults mm -hmm. because even the even the people who are tend to be role models yeah. are pedophiles mm -hmm. and the um sexual harassers and everything mm -hmm. but i think we should that's why i was very upset when the sex education was scrubbed mm -hmm. from the system mm -hmm. because um because it's if People grow up, kids grow up knowing that their body is theirs. Mm. And if someone touches some parts of my body, it's wrong. And if I do not give consent, because there are people who do not even know that they were sexually assaulted. Mm -hmm. So they later came across the tools that made them, Aware. all the news that that didn't make them feel, that didn't make them feel good. Mm. So they go with a bad perception about sexuality mm. and everything. Mm. Without even realizing that they had a very traumatizing mm. e e um, experience. So because of that, it's, I think that, first of all, having children growing up and educating them about their sexual agencies and how nobody can make them do something they don't want to do is very important. Also, too, I, I also think that... Um, support for victim is victims are very low mm. so because of that it's very hard for victims to come out and talk Speak about up. what they've been through yeah Be because it's imagine going through that trauma and you speak up and nobody even believes you mm -hmm. and everybody takes the side of your abuser instead they of demonize you. you yeah yeah Be and i also want people to know that anybody can be a rapist anybody no matter how good they are perceived to be because she hears stories about her oh this this man is a good man you can you never, can do, never that. do that but he did it mm. Mm. very well did it nana do you, do you want to add to that um, I feel like the other thing that will help is um, definitely agreeing with you about the need for comprehensive sex education. But luckily, I think a lot of feminists have created safe spaces online mm -hmm. where people can learn about sex and sexuality. Myself mm -hmm. and my, um, my best friend, Malika Grant, we created a blog called Adventures from the Bedrooms of African Women mm. in 2009. So it's a space where lots of women share their experiences of sex and sexuality. And there are lots of other spaces. I know, Dede, you have your Instagram lives that you do. Yeah. So there are lots of feminists who have led yeah. initiatives to try and create spaces online where people can learn about sex and sexuality. And I think that all contributes to creating a safer society mm. for women and girls. We'll talk about criminal justice reform, but before that, let's make our way to Nigeria and take some opinions from you, our viewers. Yes, I think the society should actually, because um, I don't know why it's a crime if a guy can be free about his sexual life and then the woman can't. I feel there should be equality in all areas. 
Okay, for me, I feel like the females should be more, like, to, should be sexually confident about their sexual life. Like, there's, there's some parts that guys will always be proud of, them sleep, having sex with a girl, but when a girl says it, like, they judge it her or they judge her, which is not supposed to be so. I think that we shouldn't live too recklessly because it always causes issues at the end of the day. But of course, women should be allowed to be to make their moves and not be shamed for that. That's what I think. Women should be free to express their sexuality as much as they want because men are allowed to express their sexuality as much as they want, and women shouldn't be any different. So. Even women being free about their sex, since men already sexualize us, it would be it would be better if women were free with their sexuality. So those were some views from our viewers in Nigeria on the topic of women and their sexual agency. But in the studio, I hear we have questions, right? Okay, let's start with you. Hi, Nana and Dede. Hello, Angie. Hi. My name is Queen Vicky, and I would want to ask. How can one own up and be confident about his or her sexuality with, uh, without taking or without giving attention to criticism? Okay. And if you are criticized, how do you navigate through the criticism and still own up to your sexuality? Mm. Thank you. Good question. <laughs> Nana, why don't we start with you? I think that's an excellent question, Queen Vicky. And... I mean, the fact that you're even thinking like this makes me feel like hopeful. And I think the first thing is that recognition that you want to own up to your own sexuality. Yes. And a lot of the time it actually means somehow living outside of society's norms and getting to a stage where you don't really give a fuck about other people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. but, but what helps you to, to do that is to find community, to find like-minded people. You know, I'm a feminist, and so a lot of my friends are feminists. Mm. And part of, I think, what the feminist revolution has been really good for is teaching women to own their own bodies, to have confidence within themselves. So because I'm surrounded by people who think the way I think, it makes me feel like, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you even know? when you're discouraged, they can pick you back exactly. up, Exactly. Right? So I would say find your community. And especially in this day and age, like online, you can find like-minded people, you know, read books that mm. will encourage you um, and teach you about your own sexuality and find your, your people, is what yeah. I would say. <laughs> All right, who else? You had a question as well? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Hi, Angela. Hi. Um, I want to ask Nana this question. And as usual, as you know, my name is Steven Apia, known as Romantic. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> she made a point on um, married women not giving sex to their partners for some time. Mm -hmm. When he or she, when he needs it, sorry. Yeah, so I, want to, I wanted to throw more light on that. On that for you. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I mean, sex is not a thing, right? It's not a thing that you give or you take. Mm -hmm. It's an act. It's an act of love. It's an act of care. An act of intimacy between two people. Those people do not have to be married. They do not even need to be two people, right? And the point I was making is even if you're married to somebody, it doesn't mean they've bought your body. When you marry somebody, you don't buy their body. You don't own them. They still belong to themselves. If you and I got married, you still belong to yourself. I still belong to myself. Hopefully, we have desire towards each other and we want to have sex. And when we do, that's great. But there may be a day where you don't want to have sex with me. I can't force you to have sex with me. That's your right. You understand? Has your question be, been answered or you, you still want more? Okay. <laughs> Dede, <laughs> Dede, do you want to um, add to what Nana has um, said? Oftentimes, people think that um, because we someone is married to someone, they lose every self and sense of self-agency. Self. And that's very wrong. Even you don't own a person. You partner with a person. So... Once you partner with the person, it's, imagine it's not the same thing, but imagine you have a business partner mm -hmm. and you go to your business partner and like, I think we should do this, do this concerning our business. Yeah. And your business partner is like, no, nah, I don't think it's good for the business yeah. and everything. Now, both of you, it's just two of you. Yeah. Now, what do you do? You, have to you come to a middle ground. 
So that is where we the partnership this comes. the partnership comes in, and you have to compromise as well. Yeah. So if your partner is like, no, I don't want. There are so many reasons why people may not want to have sex with you, and as she, as she said, sex is a connection. So imagine I'm upset at you, and you come and you want us to have sex. Mm -hmm. Why would I be having sex with someone I'm upset with? Mm. So if I can just add to that, I think you are thinking of this in the, again, gender roles, right? A man is supposed to do this, and a woman is supposed to do that. Um, the conversation we're having here today is about not having roles. Let's be persons. Let's be, let Angela be Angela. Let uh, Mr. Romantic be Mr. Romantic. Let Nana be Nana. If Nana feels like having sex today with Mr. Romantic or whoever, she's allowed to. If she doesn't feel like it, even if she's married to the person, she's allowed to. Because again, you're a person first before you're a wife, right? She's Nana before she's Mr. Whoever's wife. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Does that help? People also have kinks. Yeah. Even, even though I feel like kinks is kinks as something that we should embrace we should be able to talk about our kinks with our partners we should be able to you know explain it someone likes to be slapped during sex mm. or before sex slap me and they're turned on or someone likes to be put on a leash or tied up blindfolded mm. or someone wants to wants you to lick their feet or something mm -hmm. everybody has something yeah that's it they enjoy they enjoy as far as you are doing it with someone who is consenting to it mm -hmm. once again consent when it comes to this consent is always always important yeah like all the time yeah. i just want the audience to understand that anytime sex or sexuality is? comes in your mind just just always no consent so Nana, then at, at what point do we draw a line between kinky well, kinks and and abuse? No, I think people who are engaged in say the BDSM community yeah. they know and they they are actually explicit about it and they communicate. Mm -hmm. It's not silent and the consent is constantly sought yeah. and reassured and people have safe words and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I think violence and sexual abuse is very, very different mm. from you know, practicing um, bondage, okay. domination, yeah. sadism, Kinky and sex. masochism. Yeah. All right, so let's take our last question. Um, did they mention earlier on that sexuality is a journey? And then um, sometimes exposure brings people to a certain point in life where they have to decide. I would like to know if there's a situation where something happened to you and then you've been nudged on a path to decide for yourself. Is it an informed decision or someone is influencing mm. that decision? Okay. Thank you very much. So, experiences make up who we are. Mm. Whatever you go through in life makes up who you are. Your trauma, your triggers, mm. what makes you happy, what you like, what you don't like. It makes you who you are as yeah. a person so it's part of the journey you it's mentioned, all right? so it all counts in the journey because once you have an experience you make an informed decision with that experience mm. you tell us a little bit about your book and then we'll wrap up okay so my book the sex lives of african women is out now it's a non-fiction book based on interviews I've done with women from all across the African continent and the diaspora. Wow. Yeah, so women from... <laughs> Thank you. Ghana, Nigeria, mm -hmm. UK, Canada. It's available to buy. Can I mention where it's going to be available to yes, buy? Right. At right. Vidya Bookshop. Okay. Um, there's a branch in Osu and a branch in Laboni. So Online? Please, um, Are it's you also as well? it's, yes, it's also available online. Okay. Um, if you want to buy it via Amazon or if you have a Kindle and you prefer to buy it that way, but yeah. it really speaks to the vast experiences the African women have had. It captures people's journeys, the journeys they've taken to figure out their own sexuality. Um, there's a section which is called freedom, and for me, that's really a manual on how to live your best sex life. Mm. There's a section on healing, which captures sometimes the healing journeys people need to go through 
or sometimes the healing experiences people have gone through in order mm. to heal from trauma and sexual abuse. Wow. Um, it's the book that I wish was out there, and so I decided to write that book. For, so for yourself and for women. Exactly. Wonderful. And men, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Nana Dakwa Sechema is an African feminist writer, author of the book, The Sex Lives of African Women, and of course, the beautiful Dede Aye feminist and event organizer. Thank you so much, uh, Nana and Dede, for an insightful conversation, and we hope to see you back on the White Couch very soon. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Sexuality is a natural part of human existence. Sex should be accessible to everybody and devoid of stigma. Let's band together as women and people and own our sexual narratives because there's no value in shame. Time now for Destination Africa, where we bring you beautiful destinations on the continent of Africa. Where are we going? Let's find out. <laughs> on this episode of Destination Africa, we take you to East Africa. Our stop is Kenya. Welcome to Amboseli National Park. Our correspondent Kate Wajigu takes us on an adventure to one of Africa's most visited game reserves. Crowned by Kilimanjaro, Africa's highest peak, the Amboseli National Park is one of Kenya's most popular parks. Amboseli comes from a Maasai word meaning salty dust. And it is one of the best places in Africa to view large herds of elephants up close. Nature lovers can explore five different habitats here, ranging from the dried up bed of Lake Amboseli, wetlands with sulfur springs, the savanna, and woodlands. also visit the local Maasai community who live around the park and experience the authentic culture. The open plains, Akasia woodlands, thorn scrub, swamp and marshlands of the Amboseli Park are filled with wildlife and together are one of Kenya's premier destinations for the game drives that wildlife photographers and animal lovers of every kind dream of. Amboseli National Park as a profoundly biodiverse area is home to the ancient Maasai nation, presenting an immersive experience in both natural and bountiful historical heritage. A snapshot of quiet days gone by, the Maasai tribe's people continue their historical ways as pastoralist herders of cattle and sheep in the Amboseli region. East Africa offers a wide array of adventure and wild life through vast plains of grassland and other scintillating sites. The African continent is yours to explore. Discover more of Kenya on Destination Africa. Visit theangelabamfa.com for more. All right, we have a question? Yeah. Hi, Angie. Hello. My name is Enam, and my question is, if you have the chance to be reborn, would you like to come back as a woman, and why? Um, OK. Give it up for her. Um, well, Enam, I know nothing else but being a woman. Um, I enjoy my femininity. I enjoy who I am. I like who I am. So absolutely. Let's leave being male to the males and be female, right? Absolutely, I would love to come back as a woman. Giveaway two lucky audience members will walk away with vouchers for full body grooming at Beckham House of Beauty. 
as always, DJ Akel will assist me in choosing. Okay. Who, who's getting it? Okay. Number 20. You want something? <laughs> Number eight. You two have won yourself vouchers for full body grooming at Beckup House of Beauty. Here is an exciting chance to win a defining experience to explore the east and south of Africa. Excited about the stunning landscapes of South Africa and the world famous ranges of the Kenya Safari? You are in for a treat then. The Angela Bamford Show is giving away an all expenses paid trip to Cape Town and Nairobi, courtesy Copan Hospitality. Our lucky viewers stand a chance to enjoy a six night bed breakfast, a day tour of the picturesque Cape Town and Table Mountain. How about a boat cruise to Seal Island or an escape to the captivating wine lands? Add a Kenyan safari and you are set for an exciting adventure. Head over to theangelabamford.com to find out how you can win. It's the Angela Bamford Show. Thank you for watching the show. The next performer makes music that I absolutely enjoy and adore. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Sefa. <laughs> Mwah. All right, so I know you're going to perform, but before you do that, let's let's chit chat. Okay. What what inspires the music you make? Can you share that with us? Um, yes, it's everything for me, and especially I feel like music is a very spiritual thing, and I like the way it communicates with people. It it makes people dance, it makes people like sing along and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it's everybody and everything for me, and also I love women, so I always try to talk for women. I feel like. Women are the most strongest people, but we are putting the box. Absolutely. Yes, exactly. We, we, are, we, are the most, we, are, we are the most strongest people, so they try to put us in a box so that we can't talk. So I use my music to talk for women. Yeah. Like, so come on. That. Yeah. <laughs> Now, where can we find your music? Oh, on all musical platform. Any musical platform you use, you just type Sefa and all my music. So make sure you go out and download, OK? okay. <laughs> Very well. Now, moving forward, mm -hmm. what can we expect from you? More amazing, music. Amazing things, especially more music. I feel like I'm, I'm, I've been, somebody put me on a mountain and just pushed me. So now I'm just going. Off the cliff going. and you're rolling. <laughs> 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 All right, wow. <laughs> Performing Sugar and Ichoke, the lovely Sefa. Are you ready? Let me see you stand. Huh. I know you know this one, right? I can't hear you. Listen, what's the best day? The best day, 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 the my mind Cause tonight is the night I've been waiting for Baby, tell me what you waiting for Cause tonight is the night I've been waiting for Baby, tell me Are you ready? Hey. Cause this love will choke Mr. Dan, Mr. Dan No, we choke, oh, oh, oh. We choke, oh, we choke, oh, we choke Cause this love will choke No, we choke, oh. Oh, we 
choke, oh we choke, cause this love we choke, yeah, oh we choke, oh we choke, oh we choke, oh we choke, cause this love we choke, yeah, 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 oh we choke, oh we choke, oh we choke, oh we choke, cause this love we choke, oh we choke, oh we choke, oh we choke, oh we choke, so I want you to do something for me, okay, you know I have a challenge going on. And I, right now, it's live one, so I can't sing and dance. So I want you to sing because this love is choke, then I do the dance. Then I'll sing, then you do the dance. Are you ready? Because okay. this love is choke. Love is choke, oh. It's choke, oh, it's choke, oh, it's choke. Because this love is choke. Love is choke, oh. It's choke, oh, it's choke, oh, it's choke. Because this love is choke. That's why he choke, oh he choke, oh he choke. Cause this love he choke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love he choke, oh he choke, oh he choke, oh choke. Just give me one chance. All I want is one dance with you. Sweat and we'll move. Let the music take us to where it wants to take us to. 